Hello all, this is Sahana here with the concept polygenic inheritance. So basically there are some traits which are governed by one or few genes and such traits can be referred as qualitative characters or oligogenic characters or sometimes they can also be referred to as monogenic inheritance. Now there are some other kind of characters which, which are controlled by several genes which means there are there is involvement of two or more genes such characters are called as quantitative characters or polygenic characters and the mode of inheritance of these polygenic characters is termed as polygenic inheritance or quantitative inheritance and since there is involvement of several genes or factors in uh, polygenic inheritance it is also known as multiple factor inheritance or it can also be referred to as multiple factor inheritance now the definition goes like this the term polygenic inheritance is applied when two or more independent pair of genes affect the same character in the same way and in additive fashion which means there is a presence of two or more independent pair of gene which is affecting a single character say for example the flower color or a seed color or anything for that matter and it is affecting that particular character in same way uh, it's not like uh, of these independent pairs one is having a positive effect and one is having a negative effect it's not like that all the pair of independent genes have same effect on the characters of phenotypic trait and this happens in additive fashion or in accumulative fashion in these cases the net effect on the character or trait depends upon the combined action of several genes each of which have a small effect on the same character say for example there is a uh, involvement of two particular genes or three particular genes in production of a flower color wow, which has a two extreme uh, colors that is one is dominant extreme and the other one is recessive extreme and as the term uh, as all the uh, alleles will be in the recessive condition the recessive extreme color will be produced and as the dominant allele will be keep on add, uh, keep adding to the genotype then this white shifts to the extreme dominant color and it goes through a continuous variation it's not like all of a sudden it changes to red or it goes to the recessive color not like that it actually have different gradations in them all right the polygenic traits this uh, this doesn't uh, does not show the clear cut differences between the individuals there are gradations that occur between these two elements that is the recessive character and the dominant character and these genes are called cumulative genes or polygenes and the characters that are influenced by these cumulative genes is known as polygenic traits. Now, the examples include the height of the plant, weight, pigmentation and so on, pigmentation of various parts of the plant. But there is a classical example where maize grain color acts as a polygenic trait here. So this polygenic trait is controlled by three gene loci. That is, there is involvement of three independent pair of genes here. The green color can range from white to dark red. As I said, there are two extreme colors here or two elements here. That is, one is extreme recessive character that is white and there is extreme dominant character that is dark red. And this appears depending on the amount of pigment that is expressed all right so uh, of this uh, in these three independent genes each gene has two alleles in them which either codes for red pigment or white pigment if the gene is or if the allele is dominant it produces red pigment if the allele is recessive it produces white pigment if it is homozygous then the uh, red pigment will be produced if it is recessive i mean homozygous recessive it produces white pigment if it is heterozygous what happens it just happens uh, like in the case of incomplete dominance both the alleles are present so both of them express their character red and white they combine and give a different shade which is uh, different of that of both the parents that is red and white intermediate color will be produced here the most frequent combinations have an equal number of two allele types which means of the 
number of progenies that is produced in the in particular generation there the most frequent combinations that will be occurring is the one with the genotypes having both the allele types in equal number now the combination of one extreme or the other are relatively rare the overall pattern of inheritance shows continuous variation now here pure white line parent and pure red line parent is being crossed here pure line has all the alleles in homozygous recessive condition which is responsible for the production of white pigment and pure red parent line have all the gene in dominant homozygous condition which which is responsible for the production of red color pigment here now as these are crossed the gametes are formed and f1 hybrid shows heterozygous or equal number of both dominant and recessive allele so what is happening here is the dominant alleles are producing red color and the uh, in red pigment and then the recessive alleles are producing white pigments here so as a result there is a phenotype that is medium red and now when these f1 hybrids are self crossed or self fertilized there is variety of uh, f2 progenies that are being produced now here the phenotype is decided or uh, phenotype can be uh, predicted by the presence of dominant alleles here if there is no presence of dominant allele if there is zero dominant allele then the progeny's phenotype will be white and if there is one red pigment alleles or the dominant allele that is present then it has a little bit of red pigment that is produced which mix uh, with, which mixes up with the white pigment that is produced by the all these recessive alleles here so what happens there is a light shade of uh, red color that is being produced in the progenies of genotypes these three and then there is another genotypes where there is two copies of dominant allele so what happens there is a little bit of darker red shade than the previous one and there is these genotypes which are the highest frequency why because the uh, the combinations have equal number of both the uh, dominant and the recessive alleles here so what happens they are equally producing red and white pigment and the color is intermediate color that is between the red and white between those two parents character and there is this combination where four copies of red pigment producing alleles are present so what happens is a little bit of darker shade of red is being produced by these progenies and there are another three genotypes where five copies of dominant alleles which is responsible for the production of red pigment alleles is produced so the darker shade a little bit more darker shade of red is being produced with the progenies whereas in this last combination of genotype this is a extreme uh, dominant character here because all the alleles are in homozygous dominant combination so what happens is the extreme dominant character is being produced that is the red color dark red color is being produced here now the checkerboard goes like this these are the f1 pair uh, f2 hybrids which acts as f2 parents and this each of these parent gives eight of the different gametes here so eight by eight checkerboard is being drawn here which gives the possibility of 64 progenies the genotypes of these progenies can be predicted here now all the squares are filled with the genotypes or genetic constitution of the progeny and when uh, here to predict the phenotype we'll have to just see the upper uh, uppercase allele or the dominant allele that is a b c if there is it goes like this if there is one uppercase letter or one dominant allele then the color will be this lighter and if there is two uh, uh, dominant allele then the shade will be like this and so on it goes like that so here this particular progeny has all the six dominant allele so what happens the extreme dominant color will be produced and what happens in these six 
of 64 progenies these six have five of them are dominant alleles here so what happens there is more production of red pigment and one allele produces white pigment so what happens there is a little bit of lighter shade than the extreme dominant color and here 15 of them have four dominant alleles to produce a different shade of red and here 20 of the progenies have only three or yeah, only three dominant alleles to produce the red pigment and the other three will produce the white pigment so there is a mixture of these two colors and there is a production of a intermediate color that is a mixture of white and yellow or I mean white and uh, red here and there are another white I mean the another 15 progenies with two dominant alleles and four recessive alleles so what happens here is there is a little bit of lighter shade of red is being produced and there is there are six progenies with a single dominant allele to produce red pigment and the other five alleles produce white pigment so the shade of red that is produced is very very lighter here and in the last progeny all the alleles are in recessive condition which means there is only production of white pigment here there is no production of red pigment so as a result one of them is white here so that is how all the uh, 64 offsprings produces a continuous variation and produces a different shades of two elements here and there is production of different gradations of colors here so this is the best example of polygenic inheritance.